We spent a lot of time dreaming about what a high school could be. Bridgeport is one of the poorest cities in the United States, and it's surrounded by very wealthy suburbs. The notion is to bring together suburban and urban students and to have a racial mix and a socioeconomic mix. Well, for the students, also wanted them to learn to work collaboratively and to learn in an interdisciplinary setting. Because as we look at any universal problems now, it takes many disciplines to solve any problem. Fairchild Wheeler is a unique school because we stand from a philosophy that we're creating engineers. Um, we're, we're creating an environment where students can be prepared for any form of future they meet. We had the tremendous opportunity while programming this building to meet with a wide variety of community partners. We had some very in-depth workshops where we really got at the kinds of things that were going to be taught in the building, brainstormed a little about things that might be taught in the future, and began to design spaces to try to accommodate the unknowable. Most of the kids that go here have grown up in the city, and even though Bridgeport is the park city, it's still a very urban environment with a lot of asphalt, a lot of concrete. When the kids come to this site, it's a very different experience for them. When they get off the bus, they walk through the woods. Rain or shine, snow, sun, they really get in touch with a different kind of environment. We also wanted to use the site as part of the curriculum, as a source of study. It was important that any sustainable features in the building be part of the learning environment. We wanted to make sure that the kids could actually see them, touch them, work with them, understand what's going on. The green roofs, in addition to being sustainable, actually provide a platform for a lot of student experimentation, whether it's the bee colonies that they've started keeping on the roof, or one of the things I'm most excited about is the green roof off the robotics lab. The kids work on their robots in the lab, and then they take them out for testing on the roof. Having the kind of furniture and lab space that we have where kids are able to, to, to just collaborate, which is a part of our instructional process here. Having the large open area classrooms are wonderful for classes as a whole to get together to collaborate on projects. I would say the idea of small learning communities was probably at the heart of every decision we made in this building. The fact that it was three 500 student high schools and then each of those high schools had specialties really drove the entire layout of the building. So we have three wings, each of those wings has its own central gathering space, and each of them is designed to be uniquely suited to their program. Every space indoors, outdoors, on the roofs, in the cafeteria, it all was done with the thought in mind that this could be used as a teachable space, as a place for learning to happen. Uh, it happens formally, it happens informally, they use the hallways. We have tables that are available for students to leave the classroom and go out and learn informally from each other. But those also become places of socialization. We've seen students who were not really interested in learning, not happy to be in high school, just turn around. Uh, this year we had our first graduating class and we graduated 98.5% of the kids. That's in contrast to what happens in Bridgeport. Most urban areas have about a 60% graduation rate. When we had our first graduation, it uh, was uh, in many ways a culmination of uh, about 10 years work. I felt uh, most of all we've proved something here that this can be done and can be replicated. You can bring people together with varied backgrounds. They can get along, they can learn to work together. You can take urban kids, some who come from very deprived and poor backgrounds, and they can come to school and be motivated and excel.